Ocean County Library for hosting the Alzheimer's Association, as well as the delivery of this program, Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body, Tips from the Latest Research. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, so this is an optimal opportunity to inform and educate the Ocean County Library community about healthy living, about the importance of adapting healthier lifestyle habits, talking today about social engagement, cognitive engagement, health and nutrition, as well as the importance of physical exercise. And tips on the latest research are really important to recognize as we are uncovering uh, certainly data as well as the reasons why it is important for us to practice and adapt healthier lifestyles for preventing the onset of early mal cognitive impairment. So with that, I'll turn the program over to Debbie. Well, thank you, Robin, and thank you, Nancy, and all the other members from Ocean County. Uh, it is always a pleasure to be here. Now, this is a very popular topic. Uh, I think most of us want to know how to take care of ourselves. Uh, what we're gonna see here from uh, research that's been done, that what we are gonna talk about certainly helps your brain and your body. And I'm sure some of it you're familiar with, but others might be new. So here we go. We are going to begin. What I hope to accomplish today is for you to identify the reasons for taking care of yourself as you age. And it's never too late. If you've been doing some of these, great. But maybe you've been a little lax for the last couple of years. Never too late to start. Uh, we're going to list strategies to age well in physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, cognitive activity, and social engagement. And what I want you to do as we go through each of those four sections is to make your own plan. So if you have a piece of paper, you can divide it into columns. Uh, so the first column, you know, we're gonna be talking, you know, about physical health and exercise, and you're gonna list in that first column what you currently do. Now, remember, no one's gonna see it but you. And then you wanna list in the next column what, uh, what your goal is for one month and then maybe the third column, six months. So you are making a plan and it's gonna progress uh, as uh, the months go by. So um, that's your responsibility, your task. And I'm gonna go through a lot of all of these sections and talk about it. Aging and health. Well, aging depends on a number of things. It depends on your genes your environment, and your lifestyle. So let's talk about it for a minute. Uh, genes, you know, something that's within our bodies. Um, and we have, especially if we're talking about all, Alzheimer's, we have two genes. One is the risk gene, and the other one is the deterministic gene. So if the risk gene is evident, what that tells you, well, maybe, you know, not definite, but maybe. And then if you have the deterministic genes, that goes a little further. It says, yeah, you know, you're going to get, in this case, Alzheimer's. So what else can affect all that? Well, your environment, where you live and how you live, and that includes the type of lifestyle. And uh, all the things that we're gonna talk about is included in that lifestyle. And those lifestyles may help keep your body and therefore your brain healthy. And that's what we want to do. Let's talk about that brain, right? The brain is the control center for the whole body. 
there are 100 billion nerve cells or neurons that create a branching network. So remember that, that's important. Signals travel through the brain and they form memories, thoughts, and feelings. And Alzheimer's is one of those diseases that destroys brain cells. So look at the picture on the right, right? What we see uh, is a brain, kind of a side view here. And let's say that those little light lines that, that are evident are pathways. And they should be open and clear so that the impulses travel through them and they, they uh, control different parts of your brain, depending upon where it is. Well, let's pretend that your branching network is like train tracks. And we know that the trains move on these tracks and they get from one destination to another. So from the brain to the part that they control. Well, let's suppose that with those trains, something is on those tracks and they derail the train. Well, the same thing happens with the pathways. You know, their impulses should be traveling over them. But what happens is there is something that blocks it. These would be tangles, uh, plaque that, that lines those pathways. And so the signals do not get to where they're supposed to, and that affects the brain and the memories and the thoughts and the feelings. Alzheimer's is a disease that destroys the brain cells. Now, the heart-brain connection. The heart and brain are very interrelated. What you do to protect your heart can also help your brain continue to operate. So let's think about that for a minute. We know that the heart and therefore the brain need blood and they need oxygen that travels in that blood to all the parts of the body and of course includes the brain. The brain needs that blood flow. And did you know that 25% of blood from every heartbeat goes to the brain. Isn't that amazing? So if you can feel your pulse, you know, a lot of people can right on the thumb side of your wrist, you feel a pulse that beat, beat, beat. Every time you feel that, you know that 25% of the blood in that heartbeat goes right to the brain. Pretty impressive, I think. This is how it happens. So let's let's go to the next slide. Uh, let's talk about Alzheimer's and dementia. You know, most people think it's one and the same, but it is not. Dementia is caused by many different diseases and conditions, and it's not part of, um, you know, normal aging. So the opposite of that is your Alzheimer's disease. And it is the most common cause of dementia. So a lot of times we call it the dementia umbrella. So picture an umbrella. It's, it's a symptom, the symptom being called dementia and dementia includes that confusion and uh, inability to recall uh, recent memories um, and so it's a symptom. Underneath that umbrella are lots of diseases that have that symptom of dementia. Alzheimer's being the most common cause of dementia. So there are a number of risks for Alzheimer's and dementia. 
They include age, right? Um, theoretically, the older you get, the, be the more at risk you are for Alzheimer's and dementia. Genetics, as I mentioned before, there are different types of genes. If you have in your family, you, maybe your mother or your father had Alzheimer's and dementia, maybe their mother or father or brothers and sisters, if you see that it's running in the family, you know, one of those genes, uh, risk or deterministic, uh, might be positive. Head injury. Head injury with many studies. It's been on football players. It's been on boxers. And even the kids that play, uh, I can remember, showing my age, I guess, uh, when the kids in school did not wear helmets when we didn't wear helmets for bike riding. And certainly over the years that we did not wear um, helmets, there, you know, there were many studies that showed in follow-up that people did develop dementia and possibly Alzheimer's. Now, cardiovascular factors. It has been shown that people who have known cardiovascular factors like hard, like high blood pressure, one of the most common, um, is a cause if it's not controlled for um, for the brain to have difficulty, whether it be the dementias or the Alzheimer's. And you know, certainly think about high blood pressure. Normal uh, blood pressure, again, you kind of, you know, you feel your pulse is it regular. They take blood pressure. There's a top number and a bottom number. And, you know, we have some idea of what's normal. Well, in those cardiovascular factors and in with the heart, if the heart is not beating correctly, maybe the, the vessels from that leave the heart Maybe they're blocked with plaque or fat or something, even um, even blood clots. The heart has to work so much harder to get the blood to the other side. I like to think of it like a glass of fresh orange juice, and you've got a straw, and you are trying to you know suck and drink up the the orange juice, but with all that natural things in it, like a pit, the pit gets stuck in the straw. And so you are working harder and harder to get the juice uh, to flow through it. And that's what happens with the heart. Um, if something becomes blocked, the blood, along with the oxygen, cannot get to the parts that it's supposed to. Finally, fewer years of formal education. And it has been shown that uh, one should keep on learning. You know, never stop. Doesn't have to be towards a degree, but education really keeps um, your impulses active and it's good for the brain. Now, there are some therapies for Alzheimer's. But they can treat symptoms for a time, but they cannot cure, prevent, or even slow disease progression. When we talk about taking care of yourself, uh, especially as we age, we're going to be talking about these four uh, areas. Physical health and exercise, social engagement diet and nutrition, and cognitive activity. So uh, we're going to talk about each of those. So let's talk about physical health and exercise. You know, cardiovascular activity is really important because it does help reduce your risk of cognitive decline. And regular, that's, I think, the key word there, regular and vigorous exercise leads to increased blood flow and other physical activities can also yield benefits. So what you want to do here is get the blood flowing. If you sit all day long, sit in a chair, watch TV, your blood 
it really isn't flowing very fast. So you really want to do things that get it to flow, you know? Ever seen real walkers? They've got, you know, their arms going or something in their arms and uh, walking a little bit brisk. Now, I do not recommend that. If you haven't been walking, you want to start slow and increase and make sure that your doctor says it's okay. There is no single recipe for brain health. So each one of these little pieces could add um, a, uh, a part to this recipe. It's surprising how you can easily build up habits of just taking 15 to 20 minutes out of your day to go down, hit the treadmill, and just do it. Just do it. Just get on it, put my headphones on, and just walk at a nice brisk pace for myself, build up a quick heartbeat, quick sweat. And it's amazing how quickly I can go from 15 minutes to 20 minutes, and then over time, 30 minutes, and over time, 40 minutes. Before you know it, you know, you're up to 45 minutes of walking, and even at a higher incline and also at a higher pace. And again, it's all about incorporating habits and the choices that we make. Right. So if this has not been a habit uh, that you've done, then I can be the first one to say I I don't do it as much as I should. You know, I, you can certainly start and start slow. So what can we do? Well, I, we really recommend do something you like. Start out small. Make sure you move safely. And of course, you know, safety is something we are always concerned about. Make sure you have the right sneakers on, that you dress properly. The whole goal is to get your heart rate up. You can ask friends to join you, you know. Walking goes so much quicker when you are with a friend or talking and, you know, all of a sudden you completed what your goal was and you might even be able to add to it next time. So have somebody join you. And again, please check with your doctor before you start. They know your history. They know your blood pressure. Um, they, you know, know everything, hopefully, about you. And real important to check first. Well, what else can we do? Well, if you are a smoker, stop smoking. You know, smoking affects the vessels in your body. Uh, almost acts like um, one of those blockages. Avoid excess alcohol. Alcohol affects uh, many different parts of, of your body, your brain, your liver, maybe your kidneys. Avoid excess alcohol. Get adequate sleep, all right? A lot of people are like, well, what's adequate sleep? You know, you want to get a good solid uh, six hours of that REM sleep, uh, which is a nice deep sleep. And you know what happens when, when you get proper sleep? There is this liquid that flows through the brain at night or when you're sleeping, and it really washes over the part of the brain, kind of gets rid of some bad things. So um, sleep is important. Avoid head injury. Again, we have those helmets now. Seat belts. I remember when you had to start using them. Oh my gosh. I remember my mom and dad making such a fuss. But you know what? It, uh, it works. Manage stress. There are a lot of stresses in life. And there certainly are different ways to manage stress. Uh, everything from yoga, uh, again, exercise manages stress, uh, to uh, other exercises like yoga. Uh, and, you know, if that isn't working, you certainly need to talk to your doctor uh, and possibly, um, possibly uh, prescribe something. Treat depression. Depression's a terrible thing, but many people have it. 
And again, you know, make tell somebody, talk to somebody about it. Don't deal with it by yourself. Um, and you could use some of those same techniques we use for stress. And please visit your doctor regularly. It's really important uh, to maintain uh, that those regular healthcare visits. Physical health and exercise. So what can we do? Well, we want to monitor numbers, take action. Now, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight, and cholesterol. Um, there are general values. Um, some practices, uh, they may have some modifications on those, uh, what we had considered normal. But when I went to nursing school, blood pressure was 120 over 80. Blood sugar was 80 to 120. Weight depended a lot, a lot of other factors, and cholesterol uh, less than 200. So use that as a broad guideline, and of course your physician will tell you uh, if you're normal or not normal, and he, physician will also know what other illnesses and diseases you might have that do affect these numbers. Let's talk about diet and nutrition. All right, so what do we know about diet? And that's a terrible word, isn't it? Diet's like a like a bad word. I have to diet. You know, there are so many better words to use. But what we know, what's good for the heart may also be good for the brain. Nutritious food is fuel for the brain. Following some dietary guidelines can reduce your risk of heart disease. And we'll talk about a few of these. Um, also, by following these guidelines, you can help uh, with the risk of cancer and Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, stroke, and diabetes. So foods that have been shown to um, lead to healthy aging would be uh, fruits and vegetables, and in particular, green leafy vegetables and berries, as well as limited intake of high fat food items that you get through high fat dairy and cheese and red meats, and also um, healthy vegetable oils. So this would be, olive oil would be a good example, have been shown to reduce your risk of heart disease as well as dementia. All right, so let's talk about what's good and not so good to eat. Now, remember, you're making your own plan, right? You know what you eat, and you can write that down and how you might modify it in a month or six months. So, you know, they say eat a rainbow. So we're going to talk about eating vegetables and fruits and nuts and beans and whole grains and lean meats, fish and poultry and vegetable oils. And avoid saturated trans fats, processed foods, solid fat, sugar and salt, deep fried foods, never been good, and unhealthy fast foods. All right, so this is what we should eat, eat that rainbow and avoid this. Um, as I was reading it, a question popped into my own mind, is I wonder the effects uh, on diet and nutrition uh, this current times are having, you know, the uh, inflation and the high cost of everything. You know, uh, people have to decide and uh, it's a tough time. So what can we do? Let's consult some reputable sources about dietary supplements, and vitamins. Now, the World Health Organization concluded that vitamins and supplements should not be recommended to reduce the risk of cognitive decline and dementia. So should not be recommended. These are just food supplements. Always important, work with your doctor. 
can't say that enough. Don't do it on your own. Do it in conjunction with your doctor or nutrition and dietitian um, as well. You know, and if you have a variety of different diseases, you certainly uh, do want to work with everybody because they'll help you pick the right foods for what is going on in your body. Now, cognitive activity. Let's see what we know. We know we want to keep our mind active because that's what forms new connections among brain cells. If our brain has nothing to do, those connections are going to stop working. If Even if you're doing things on uh, puzzles or talking with people, um, you know, there's just so much that you can do for this brain. So make a list of what you currently do and how you might want to improve that. Mentally stimulating activities may possibly maintain or even improve cognition. So you want to do those kind of word searches and uh, other mental stimulating activities. Engaging in formal education will keep your brain healthy and can provide protection against developing dementia. So whether it's a, a series of courses like what we've been doing, um, a lot of the community colleges have uh, activities for um, the older person and whatever it is you do, you're keeping those pathways open and that's what helps prevent dementia. One of the most interesting factors is cognitive stimulating activities, which basically for us just means uh, mental processing of information. Um, it can be from a book, it can be from the radio, it can be a magazine, it can be from a lecture, it can actually be from watching TV. All of these things require processing information. And the old adage of, you know, use it or lose it is actually something that turns out, at least from the observational data, to look like it's true. So. Numerous studies now have shown that being more engaged um, in cognitively stimulating activities is actually good for maintaining cognition. And it's true in late life, and it's true in early life. And so what we recommend is that you start early, and if you're already late, start now. Never too late to start. So think about what you do. You know, what type of activities um, do you um, regularly engage in? Um, there's so many different things. Uh, a lot of my groups, I've been telling them it's beautiful outside. Do things outside, uh, whether you um, create a birdhouse, um, have a, a fruit, vegetable, flower garden. Uh, even if, you know, you have trouble, let's say, getting, you know, closer to the ground, have something built up or, you know, go to like a Home Depot kind of place and um, look for one that's higher so you're not hurting yourself or, or falling down. Uh, but there really are a lot of things right now that uh, we can do in the summer that we really can't do in the winter. Different games you can play and they don't necessarily need um, someone else. Uh, we used to like to have our, uh, our people uh, throw like the bean bags in the hole, like a corn uh, cornhole uh, game, and um, they got pretty good at it, I might say. Complete puzzles, play games that are challenging for you. Learn a new skill or hobby, and of course, if you can, engage in ongoing learning. And there's so many you know, things uh, inside, outside that you can do by yourself or with other people. Um, so again, there's, you know, so much out there. Social engagement. And what do we know about that? Well, social engagement is associated with living longer, with fewer disabilities. And we can stay engaged in our community um, by many different ways uh, you can maintain old skills, new skills, uh, interact with people, uh, 
you know, any type of social and mental activity does support brain health and could possibly delay the onset of dementia. I like to think of it as use it or lose it. And, you know, goes with your brain. If you're not stimulating those nerve connections, they're going to die out. So what can we do for social uh, engagement? Visit with friends and family. It's always uh, a, a nice thing to do. Engage with others. Do you live in a community? Uh, do they have activities? Engage with uh, other people. Volunteer outside the home. Uh, one of the things I love when I see people uh, who are in either a full-time, part-time daycare facility, and yet they volunteer to help others in those communities. Uh, Join a group, join a club. What you want to do is is interact with people. So you say something, they respond. You have to process that, say something else. Um, social engagement is really, really important. So if we put all four pieces together, what do we have? Well, we and you and me, we're taking care of our health. We get moving, so important. And what it was hard during the pandemic and during the winter in the pandemic, um, it was hard to keep moving. Um, listening to some of my support group people, they told me how they, they walked around the living room and the hallway and they moved and I'm like, that's a pretty good idea. Um, however you can get moving, eat right. You know, it's very tempting if you're hungry to, you know, go for the quickest thing you can find. Um, you know, it's important to have those healthy items in your refrigerator or cabinets. Keep your mind active. Um, you can color, um, color by number. You can, um, a lot of documentary, documentaries, <laughs> documentaries all of a sudden seemed to come out during the pandemic. And that was great. Plus, you, you could go to different museums and uh, as if you were, you know, walking through them. A lot of things came out and that was a good thing. So any way you can keep your mind active and stay connected with others, families, neighbors, uh, whomever. Um, when you do all four together, you achieve maximum benefits. Recently at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference, there was a study reported of the results of a large clinical trial that was done in the Scandinavian countries. And in this trial, they took half the people in the trial and they adjusted their exercise level, their diet, uh, their social engagement, uh, and their mental stimulation. They, they developed programs for each one of those variables, uh, changed all of those for the people that were in the test group, and the control group just lived as they had been. There is a tremendous benefit to doing studies where we make changes and observe after the fact. That's a much stronger study than just observing people and trying to make judgments um, after life has changed for them. To my mind, one of the things that this has done is that it's changed the, the force of uh, recommendation that we might make around uh, the benefit of these interventions for prevention of Alzheimer's disease or for brain health. And the fact is that I think it's moved it from possibly exercise, diet adjustments, social engagement, mental stimulation are useful to probably. And that's a big change and makes it easier for people to make those kinds of adjustments um, for the benefit of their future health. So today, Starting now, start small and build up. Don't go running that marathon if you haven't been walking. Start small, build up. Really important. Do what you enjoy so that you will stick with it. Uh, if you do not enjoy what you're doing, 
you'll find excuses not to do it. Uh, put that on your, your chart. You know, what are you currently doing? Okay, what do you like to do? And then progress through, you know, the first month, six months. Make healthy choices, especially in the foods. Uh, it's, you know, really easy to head for the junk food. Make sure you have healthy food the best that you can, um, at least something and uh, in, in the house. So you head for that as opposed to the potato chips. My favorite. Make a plan. All right. Those different charts that uh, you were working on, that's your plan. Think, what do I like to do? How are you going to uh, engage your brain? Make that plan. Get support from others and have fun. You know, it should not be something, oh, I got to exercise or oh, I got to do this. You want to have fun at it. You know, do it with somebody. Talk to your neighbor. As long as you can have some fun with it. We'd like to call it be a savvy consumer. And I think I said this before. If it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. Be cautious when you hear huge promises, reports of miracle cures. Mm -mm, no such thing. Do your thorough research, and you can do that by consulting your physician, your pharmacist, and the Alzheimer's Association. And we'll talk about uh, those avenues shortly. But, you know, talk to people. Don't just say, oh, sounds really good. I'm going to do it. So let me talk about some of the services that are available in with the Alzheimer's Association. We have a 24-7 helpline, and it means 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day. It is a free service every day, no matter what. Uh, there are helpline specialists and master's level cl clinicians that offer confidential support and information. If you can't sleep at uh, three o'clock in the morning because something is really on your mind, you have questions, call the number uh, and you will talk to somebody. Uh, they will ask for your zip code because this is a national helpline and they want to get the information near, um, you know, near where you are. We have a bilingual staff and a translation service in over 200 languages, as well as a live chat and the TTY service as well. So that number again is 800-272-3900. We have virtual programs similar to this type of program. Uh, you can see uh, the programs listed. Uh, you can access them at www.alz.org. And they include the 10 warning signs, understanding Alzheimer's and dementia, dementia conversations, and on and on and on. Um, whatever programs we have, we'll ultimately get there. So, and you can see that we are both, both virtual and in person, and that includes our support groups and programs. Now, our community resource finder, all right, a great way to access all those different resources, <clears throat> community programs and services that are out there. So um, you can type in www, of course, dot, and then this is all one word, community resource finder dot org. So www dot community resource finder all one word dot org and you can find different programs and events uh community services are you looking for a, a daycare are you looking for a facility uh to for your loved one to be in are you looking for 
home care, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, you, you can find that. Housing options, uh, people don't know. And I recently just, you know, had one of my group members talk about this. You know, where do I aim? Do I want to go to um, a, a senior, you know, nursing facility and assisted living, a dedicated unit? Um, you think uh, uh, a daycare would be okay for now? There's, you know, different options and people are confused about which one to, you know, start with. Uh, medical services, uh, ambulance. So, you know, the what you're looking for, you know, this is where you would find it, community resource finder dot org. ALZ Connected, it's a free online community for anyone and everyone affected by Alzheimer's or one of the other dementias. I like to say it is a virtual whiteboard. Um, you can put a message on it. Uh, different, uh, different areas for caregivers or you, or for people who have Alzheimer's. Three o'clock in the morning, you still can't sleep. You write it down on this whiteboard and someone will answer you because there are other people going through the same thing. You can, uh, anybody can actually access it. And, um, you know, it's again, it's one more resource out there. Uh, to help with questions and answers. So you can find that at www.alzconnected, all one word, dot org. www.alzconnected dot org. Navigator. This is a free online tool that helps caregivers to answer their questions. And what you do is you are creating your own action plan. And it's going to link you to information support and what resources are in the area. So whether you're looking for the right kind of doctor, you have questions about your symptoms, a safety question, very important safety. What type of legal planning should you be doing? Uh, um, financial planning should you be doing? Driving, when is it time to stop driving? And how do you tell somebody that? Uh, care options, daily living, and pretty much, you know, what the things that one has to think about and you can find and make your own action plan. Support public libraries, like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.